Chargers. Touchdown, UCLA. With USC great and NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. The Trojans back in front. And LAFB founder, Ryan Zyrood. On the Believe Podcast Network and LAFBnetwork.com. This is your destination for Los Angeles football. What's up, L.A.? You heard it. This is the L.A. Football Podcast. We are always on the L.A. Football Network, LAFBnetwork.com. You can find us at the website, on YouTube, at LAFB Network, or anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher. Anywhere you get your podcasts, we are. We're also on the Believe Podcast Network. Excited about today's show. Joined again by the great not single for much longer, ladies. <laughs> about to be off the market. The coach, Talon Graf. What's up, man? How you doing? Doing well, man. How you doing? It's good to see you. I, I mean, in reality, you've been off the market for a long time. But <laughs> in in terms of legality, you're going to be off legality the market. Legality of it. Very yeah. Yes, sir. You yes, sir. Officially, officially married man next week. Yeah, man. I'm getting excited. It's going to be a good time. going to be a fun party. Can't wait, dude. You can't wait. We're uh, getting ready. Uh, Work is officially, you know, we're we're off. The wife and I, we're getting. I mean, we've been off for a while, but just you know, the, officially, so we're excited. Yes, so, um, other than that, though, what's going on? What's new with you? Anything uh, new and exciting? Just prepping, man. Yeah, just just living life, man. Uh, enjoying this time in my life, and you know, it's a it's a rarity. So I'm I'm enjoying it. That's good. That's good. Well, I am I'm back from Minnesota, back in my natural habitat. Actually, in my real studio for once. I feel like I've been recording everywhere else but here the last like month and a half. Uh, I got a story for you though, before we jump into today's show, which we're going to be discussing um, just so those listening know what we're going to be talking about soon. The new NIL rule for college athletes that can earn off their likeness. Uh, we're going to look back at some USC and UCLA players that we think will rank them who would be the top earners during their time. Um, so we'll have some fun with that. But first, my time in Minnesota, I got I got to, I got to tell you a story of we recorded what on like Wednesday, I think. When I was in Minnesota together? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think something like that. So uh, the next day, and this segment is brought to you by uh, betonline.ag, your wagering casino. Make sure you head to betonline.ag today. NBA championship, the Suns are in it. NHL, Stanley Cup playoffs, Lightning and Canadians. I think the Lightning are up 2-0. Canadians need to rebound back. You got baseball. Not a big baseball guy, but that's on. You can bet on it. Or just place your bets for the coming NFL or NCAA season. Uh, some prop bets. You can wager Super Bowl winners, division winners, all stuff like that. You can find it at betonline.ag. I would not have bet on myself about what happened next in Minnesota. So, as I mentioned to you, it's, a, it's, it's, it's like a resort, you know, 100 acres on a lake. But it's now a working farm. So, my grandparents have, a, they have about 35 cows now. So my, my grandpa, when they were tired, he was a construction worker, farmed as like a young kid, always want to be a farmer when you're tired. That's like his, like what he enjoys doing. So they got like five calves and now it's expanded to like 35. So, I mean, it's a full blown legit farm. So we get there and he's like, Hey, just so you guys know, uh, I have the vet coming on Thursday cause I need extra help. Um, you know, giving their vaccines and stuff. You know, I'm a city guy. Yeah. I grew up in the Midwest, but I was from Denver. Like I, I've not been on a working farm much other than for fun. So we walked down on uh, whatever it was, Thursday or Friday, when the vet gets there down by the barn. And we'll try, I'll try to make this visualize so people can understand. And I don't know. Have you been on a farm before? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, have you, quite, have you, quite a bit, yeah. Okay, so maybe you've done what I'm about to, to explain. So maybe. you have to basically, how we did it anyway, you, you get the bulls, so the male cows, uh, separate. So we did them last. They have like four main bulls, if you will. And then you get like, you separate the herds from like the oldest and then like the, the yearlings. So the young ones with their babies, they just have, so you have to, it's all these different like fence mechanisms. You all kind of quarter them off, quarantine them off, if you will. And then you get them to where the shoots are. It's like a three system shoot where you have like the one on standby, the batter on deck, and then the one in the, in the actual spot getting the shot. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a process anyway, getting them to actually get to where they need to go. You use like sticks and yelling and stuff and you get them in the shoot move them along. They don't like it. They're pooping everywhere, all this fun stuff. So anyway, we get through like nine or 10 cows and then we get to the babies. And so there's like five females and I think like five or six bull calves. So we get uh, the first bull calf into the actual where he's getting the shot. 
And then uh, my grandpa is like, oh, by the way, the, the bull calves were, were castrating. Um, Ryan, can you jump in the chute and you need to be um, the tail jack? What? Like, <laughs> do you know what a tail jack is? I mean, I've never done it, but yes. So but yeah, I want to cool. hear you explain it, yeah. So I think, okay, this should be fun. Uh, so I go into this chute, which is like, you know, a three by five cell, like metal sh- cell. Go in there. I have to lift the bull's tail up while the vet is right underneath me, literally castrating the bull as I'm like pushing the bull against the, the cage because, you know, he's not obviously enjoying this. He's going crazy kicking. I think I broke my foot like four times getting stomped on. Anyway, I had to do that for like five bull calves. So now I'm a certified castration artist, I guess, in, in the art form of, of uh, Rocky Mountain Oysters. You are a verified tail jacker. Yep. <laughs> well, congrats. Yeah, that's a that's a hell of an experience that not a lot of people really go through. No, yeah, that's a that's 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 a yeah. People don't really think about that <laughs> stuff. You know, it still goes on, man. That's a that's the old school mentality. That's that that has to be done though. Like it's it's a it's a requirement. Like if they don't, it's just it's out of control. Yeah, it has to because I mean, they they have one bull that is like the one that actually impregnates, and then once right. basically their bull now. And this is all new stuff I'm learning, but. It's funny. They have all these kind of like, I'm not saying inhumane things at all. Cause they're running a very clean, you know, farm, but mm. there's things that animals do. that are just like, okay, it's animalistic. It's not like what us humans do. But the one thing they draw the line at is once the bull has impregnated all the female cows, they get rid of the bull because it's not allowed to, then the bull impregnate uh, his offspring, if you will. So I'm like, okay, right. at least they got a line at that. No, uh, <laughs> No infidelity. No incest. incest. There we go. Yeah. So there, he's on his last rotation before he's got to be shipped off, and they they uh, upgrade to a new bull. <laughs> right. There you go. Hey, I love it, man. I, that's a good one. Yeah, I always look forward to your stories. You you never disappoint. Well, there's your uh, farming 101 on the LA Football <laughs> Podcast here. That brought to you by BetOnline.ag. Uh, head today, mobile or desktop, get a 50% welcome bonus. I don't know if they have any farming bets, but you, if you would have bet on me, I, I passed. I did. I did the job. Um, okay. And, and I would be disappointed in myself if I didn't point out the ironic and the irony, the, the funny of you saying I'm not a baseball guy as you wear a Colorado Rockies hat. I just find that really funny. That's fair. That's fair. It's, it's I mean, comedic. Like- it, it's a very, it was, it was enjoyable. I mean, I, uh, let's say this, I'm a baseball guy and this is like horrible fanhood, but you know, I cover football for a living, right. so I can't do it all. I'm a baseball fan when the Rockies are actually good and they're never good. They're good. Like, you right. know, two out of 12 years. <laughs> they, they had those two years a few years ago, and now they're batting it. So I, think I, I don't think I've watched a single baseball game this year. But I, f- I feel you. Yeah. Nolan Arenado, though, did return to Colorado this weekend with the Cardinals. First time facing them. So anyway, I digress. All right. <laughs> let's move on. Let's talk about the topic at hand. First of all, when this rule was first passed, Coach, you were co-hosting with me, and we had a, a, bi- a sports business guy on. I think his name was Fred Whalen, if I'm not mistaken, and kind of discussed right. – uh, what this rule would mean for these college players. And at the time, I think it was only, correct me if I'm wrong, I think only California and like New Jersey and maybe New York had passed it. And now it's pretty much NCAA wide. Um, so first of all, let me just get your thoughts. I mean, what do you think of the actual, I know we talked about it, whatever, two years ago, but mm-hmm. what's your thoughts on the this rule passed and what do you think it means for college football? I think this. I think it's really good. I really do. I think there's going to be a lot of good that comes from it, but it needs to be wrangled in a little bit. It's going to be like the Wild West for a while, man. And a lot of these kids, you know, they're going to get into bad situations. I think so. I think somehow there it needs to be regulated. Like it can't just be a free for all. Like I'm, I'm, I'm glad it happened, but it happened really quickly and and yeah. really unorganized. It's just like I get it. Some of these things are great, like uh, Spitzer Rattler coming out with his brand and 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 these endorsement deals being signed. Like I think a lot of good. But like I said, man, somebody has to make sure these kids are getting taken care of in the right way. Yeah, no, I agree. I think overall it's fantastic. Uh, I like that it's not the actual school paying the players because that was like Mm -hmm. a big uh, argument for years and years and years. Like, well, if you pay the football players, you got to pay volleyball players, softball players, hockey players, all these. So I'm glad the school's staying out of it. Um, And it's just basically, you know, how popular you are within advertising is how much money you make. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what this looks like five years from now. Um, Cause as of July 1st is the first time now this is allowed. So we'll see how it gets wrangled in, but we're going to take a look back at some USC and UCLA players in the past that had this been allowed when they played, who would be the top earners. Now 
coach, I don't know exactly. We, we discussed a little bit how we're going to do this, but I don't know um, exactly how you did it. I did it not necessarily based on how good they were, but just based on personality traits and just who would have earned the top money. I think some guys were really good, but you know, they, they maybe would have, wouldn't have been the guy that actually got a lot of advertising deals. Cause they just weren't like fun guys off the field. Maybe. So uh, I have a few guys in here. Maybe they, you don't based on that unless we did the same thing. So, I mean, I, I, I tried to blend it a little bit, you know, successful on the field and plus just really prolific guys. So yeah, I, I kind of blurred the lines a little bit. Very good. So I will let you start your top potential UCLA and USC earners. This is brought to you of course, by our friends at brewery X earn your keep with brewery X beer. They're located down in Anaheim, little Palma Beale chair right next to Anaheim stadium and the Honda center. Tell them the guys at LAFB sent you. All right, coach. Starting at 10, we always work backwards. Of course we do. That's the only way to do it. The only way. Um, you can't give away the number one right off the bat. <laughs> so number 10, I went with a USC quarterback right off the bat. Uh, and there's probably a few on our list. But Sam Darnold, um, in terms of success and championships, you know, he doesn't really measure up when it, when you think of USC quarterbacks. But man, at the time, 2016, 2017, Anybody who is a USC quarterback is going to be a prolific guy, and, and there's going to be endorsement deals out there if you want to go get them just because of who you're associated with, right? Um, but Sam Darnold, I feel like he's a pretty you know outgoing guy. He he thinks his own way. Obviously, he you know he does things his own way. Um, so I think had this been around during his time, I think he would have gone out there, and I think he would have made some money, and I think he would have done pretty well. I like it a lot. I didn't have him on my list, but you know you know my affinity for Sam Darnold. I loved him at USC and after his uh, I think it was his sophomore season when he, you know, took over for uh, Max Brown and, and ended up, you know, leading the Trojans to a Rose Bowl victory over Penn State. That next season, I think we would have seen a lot of endorsements come his way after what yeah. he did. Yep. Um, I guess I didn't have him necessarily just because of he was really relatively unknown until then, but he still played, you know, a full another season after that and and had some really good success. And now I'm hoping we talked about him on a few shows ago about his you know, pro career now at the Panthers. I hope he rekindles that greatness. So I like it. Didn't have him. He would have been, you know, right off it, but I went with, and this kind of, I'll have to explain it. Cause it kind of goes against what I was saying based on personality. I want someone in that same draft class, but playing for UCLA, I went with Josh Rosen. Um, and I think he had a very turn off of a personality. Wasn't very, a fun guy kind of was uh, a recluse kind of said things that rub people the wrong way. But when he was recruited to UCLA, he was the number one quarterback in his class of the entire nation, you know, five-star recruit out of St. John Bosco. So I think right off the bat, he would have had, you know, Gatorade, Nike, all these endorsements coming his way just because of his level of recruit being from California, you know, born in Manhattan beach, staying in Westwood for UCLA. It's that Cali kid, that Cali mentality. So I think right off the bat, he would have just been swimming in endorsements um, and the hype that he had. Now he never really lived up to that hype, still was drafted 10th overall but it seemed like he just never could quite live up to being what everyone expected him to be. At least I think statistically did okay, but just, I guess UCLA winning during his time never surmounted to what people thought. So maybe his endorsements and stuff would have dwindled a little bit, but I think the hype he had coming into college, he would have seen crazy numbers right off the bat his freshman year and probably would have been making, you know, in the millions as an 18 year old kid out of St. John Bosco. So that's why I had him at number 10. Yeah. I like that. I think it's, this is kind of how I feel about, um, how you feel about Donald is how I feel about Rosen. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he probably would have done very well, but I just, I just didn't, didn't have him on my list for, for you know, whatever reason. Yeah, I think you, a lot of these guys, you can, I mean, it's hard to because USC had so many guys. You're like, oh my right. gosh. Yeah. Nothing against UCLA, but USC, it's like, you look at their top like 50, you're like, oh, these guys have made a ton of money had they been able yeah. to. So, like, all yeah, right, number nine. Carol years, man. <laughs> um, those 03, 04, and 05 teams, you could have just had the whole roster on here. Right. Like, yeah, it would have been. Like, nice. I feel like I'm doing a disservice leaving. I only have, I think, two from that team on just because it's like, oh, I have me too. Maybe, no, I only have two, but yeah. could have had everyone. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so my number nine, I went with uh, USC running back Marcus Allen. Back in the day, man, Heisman Trophy winner. Um, everybody loved the USC running backs. And Marcus Allen came in during the time when USC running back was a thing. Like he wasn't, he didn't light the fire. He he kept it going. So I think at that time, the popularity of that position and Marcus Allen kind of took it to another level. He was, he played the game like he had never really seen before. Um, and before that, even he, he was a hard nosed fullback before he got the chance to carry the ball. So I think he would have, uh, been trusted within the within the program to to take those chances and 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 be the representative of USC. So um, I think Marcus Allen would have done very well with this NIL rule. 
Absolutely. He would have been great. He, I have him a little higher up, so I'll talk about him uh, in a minute because he's uh, you know, fantastic running back, uh, very you know, great charisma, as I'll talk about in a few. So at number nine, I kind of cheated here. If you're we, when we do our list, I do I, I cheat from time to time. So I actually did a, <laughs> I did three players as my number nine because I feel like they would be able to be endorsed as a unit. And that's the linebacking like yeah, that's that's the linebacking unit of Clay Matthews, Ray Maluga, and Brian Cushing. Like the the marketability, first I'm of all, is how mad. great that's they great. Were. That's that's fantastic. How great they were, you know, both Matthews and Cushing being drafted, I believe, in the top 10 and the Ray Maluga in the second round in the same draft class. Uh, they all had very solid um, pro careers. Uh, you know, Clay Matthews probably the best, but Maluga was pretty solid with uh, you know, Cincinnati and Cushing had, you know, some good years with the Houston Texans. Uh but collegially speaking, they were just so dominant. When you look back at that team defensively in general, how good that defense was. But then you just look at how good they were all together. I mean, teams feared them. I mean, you couldn't run against them, couldn't pass against them. Um, well, they could sack didn't, you. Didn't those three specifically grace the cover of SI or, or some I, yeah, big I magazine, so. I thought? Yeah, I'm yeah. sure they did. And probably ESPN, the magazine too. And they were seen as a unit. So I was like, okay, let's endorse them as a unit because they can be do a ton of things all together and make a lot of money. So I cheat a little bit, but I feel like I'm using them as a unit, a singular right. unit. Like no, I like that. I like that a lot because as a whole, it, they're more valuable than each individual part. I love that. I think that's, that's, that's fantastic. I'm not even upset. Appreciate um, <laughs> my number eight, um, I went with uh, Ronnie Lott. Um, dude, I think the hard nose safety the, the, in the era, like, no, like internet wasn't around, like social media wasn't around. So there wasn't, like there wasn't really a lot of platforms for these guys to get out there, but mm -hmm. had there been an NIL rule and, and, and the endorsements available for these guys to go after, I think Ronnie Lott would have, would have earned up. And, uh, and man, the, the way he played in, in the, um, what was it? He played with a broken finger or whatever it was. Yeah. He, the, that lure of, I, I just think he would have been so polarizing of a figure. There would have been so many companies, especially SoCal companies um, and California based companies that would have really been interested in this fellow. Yeah. Uh, it was so hard for me to keep, I kept him off my list as crazy. As that is arguably one of the greatest, you know, safeties in the NFL of all time, greatest coll collegiate safeties, greatest players at USC of all time. Um, there's really no argument to, to keep him off. I think it's just, this list is just so strong. So sure. Um, I yeah. agree with everything you said. The hard hitting alone was so marketable. You know, he was so feared over the middle. So there's, I can just think of yeah. so many campaigns about being feared over the middle or, you know, ADT, like you know, private security. And he'd be right. at the forefront <laughs> of it or something, just like laying out guys in front lawns. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, I everything. I had him off. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, I don't want to say this to piss off UCLA fans, but probably could have had him on over one or two of these UCLA guys, but I, just, I wanted to include some Bruins. Sure. In there, I love yeah, 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 for sure. I got plenty of Bruins on my list. Yeah. I just haven't hit them yet. And so at eight, I put Maurice Jones drew who for me oh, personally okay. was my favorite collegiate running back of all time. He played at a time when I was younger. Uh, I think he started, I'm trying to remember the years now. I think he started basically when I was entering high school, I think maybe eighth grade into high school. So that's when I really fell in love with college football, really fell in love with UCLA. Cause that was a school I wanted to go to coming from Colorado. Had I been able to afford it. Did not. Um, so, you know, I love watching it, but just, you know, coming from De La Salle, you know, that, but the program that is the most storied program in high school uh, football, I would say uh, being like five set five, seven, like two twenty, just a tree trunk of a guy. Uh, one of the few running backs that was uh, I think all pack 12 running back and all pack 12 uh, on special teams as a return man. A lot of people forget how good he was as a punt returner and a, a, um, um, uh, kickoff returner, excuse me. Um, so he could do it all. I uh, ended up being drafted in the second round. He, it was him and Deshaun Foster, like the two top running backs in UCLA history. And, and Maurice Jones drew broke most of Deshaun Foster's records. Cause I kind of went back and forth between both of them, um, as guys I wanted on this list, but I went Jones drew just because of, um, how I was able to watch him kind of what he did in the pac 12, what he came from being recruited out of De La Salle and, uh, his kind of marketability as his frame, I feel like had a lot of opportunity to market when you're five, seven, two twenty, and you have legs, the size of tree trunks, you can do things that other people can't. So uh, I went Jones Drew, MJD. Yeah. I, I actually have him quite a few spots higher, so I'll get to him a little later. Mm. Um, but, uh, I, for my number seven, here's my first Bruin. I went Troy Aikman. Um, yep. the gunslinger kind of, kind of guy that, you know, come from Oklahoma, the Southern draw, you know, obviously 
out here coming from Missouri, I, I feel like I'm kind of losing my draw. But when I first moved out here, so many people were asking like where I'm from. They loved when I said, yes, man, like everybody was into that Southerness of me. Yeah. So I think Troy Aikman could have really used that to propel into a, a marketable, prolific uh, character, if you will, um, into, you know, some markets out here. But, you know, that's just, that's just me. Yeah. You know, he could be like the John Wayne of Westwood. Right. But, uh, beautiful. Oh my Boom. God. I have, him higher up. I have him higher up. So that's why okay. I, I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, yeah. Love it. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. I have some tidbits on him. I'll talk about when we get to him. So my number seven, um, I went the great, the late, great junior Seo. Um, he could have been higher, uh, but I went with seven just for the guys I have in front of him. But uh, obviously, you know, kind of a local kid coming out of uh, Oceanside, uh, the 55 club. I think, did he start the 55 club or was Chris Claiborne before? I think he was, the first, right? Because it was him, Chris Claiborne, Willie McGinnis. Right. Um, I want to say he was the first. I'm like, I'm mixing up all the years. They were pretty like congruent, like one after another. But anyway, part of the 55 club. Um, he was just so good at USC, USC. And he had, everyone knows his personality is infectious. Uh, just the smile that can light up a room. Like he would have been in so many commercials. He would have been, uh, you know, playing Santa Claus at the mall for like, children's foundations, you know, things he could do at hospital. I feel like he'd be really involved with like kids stuff. Um, and then, so there's so many companies that want to have a face uh, of, of smiling happiness to go around with the, you know, kids and stuff like that. So he'd have been super involved in that. And just obviously his play on the field spoke for itself, like just a dominant wrecking ball as a middle linebacker. Um, so yeah, junior Seau, uh, you know, RIP, we miss you still, but a uh, great UCL, USC, a great professional guy and someone that would have made a lot of money collegiately with this NIL rule. Yeah, say I was definitely someone I thought about, and I ended up leaving him off. But yeah, being from San Diego and that localness of it, yeah, I, I agree with hundred um, percent. So my number six, I went with another UCLA quarterback in Caden McNown. Um, the dude was just so successful and, and kind of brought UCLA back to prominence a little bit. Um, I just think he was in, in the Heisman voting, and he was always in the Heisman conversation. I think the guy would have just been able to find any endorsement he wanted to, especially SoCal. Um, centered but i think even nationally with his heisman not notability i think people would have come a lot of people would have come calling yeah yeah i kept him off just to me not being a, a poignant personality but yeah i mean his how i mean arguably not really even arguably statistically the best quarterback in ucla history uh you mentioned with the heisman and stuff so that alone is going to get you endorsement deals when you're kind of the talk of national prominence because of how good you are at the most important position in football so probably right. should have had him on i kept him off mainly just because he's more of a quiet you know, uh, not a super outspoken guy like some of these other guys on the list. Um, but, but yeah, you're absolutely right. When you're that good at the position and a, you play at a L.A. school that is number two in the nation and media, uh, he probably would have got quite a few endorsements. So don't disagree with you. Just didn't have him on. So that was, I your, you. that was your six. No, my, that was my six, yeah. Okay, cool. So my six, this is where I have Marcus Allen. Um, everything you said, uh, phenomenal running back. Uh, I still think to this day, and this wouldn't have mattered during his college days, but the only player ever to what win a Heisman, a national championship, a Super Bowl, and a Super Bowl MVP, something like that. Um, you know, playing with USC and then being playing for the LA Raiders. Uh, but yeah, he was just so good. Basically, broke almost every record I think for a USC running back at the time. Um, like you said, came in when the running back was like the best position in the country for USC. It was RBU, and he lived up to the hype. And then some, um, just so good, was able to put teams on his back. And um, and just the smile, the charisma, the what he was able to do off the field and really didn't have any, you know, trouble or anything like that. So he's a pretty clean guy from everything I know. And uh, definitely, I think, would have been a, a very sought after person for many of these companies, uh, not just in L.A., but nationally to be their spokesperson. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's done stuff, obviously, in the NFL afterwards. So he would have been he'd have been just fine starting off as an 18 year old in Los Angeles. Yeah, I definitely agree. Definitely agree. Um, so my number five was uh, Keyshawn Johnson, wide receiver for USC. He obviously wanted to be the number one overall pick, which is kind of unheard of for a wide receiver. Um, but yeah. dude, the dude was everywhere when he was at USC. Like he was, everybody knew who Keyshawn Johnson was without this NIL stuff. Like, had been able to go out and earn money. He has such a big personality. He has a, he has a big radio show out here. Um, he's obviously done stuff. He's always been in the news, like even in the NFL, good and bad. So I just think he's his personality plus his on the field talent, the, the match made in heaven. I think it would have been lightning in a bottle. 
And just a reminder, this top five is brought to you by Moink Meat. If you love meat, that's steaks, ribs, really any kind of meat you're going to grill, put in the oven, however you cook, smoke, you got to check out Moink Meat. Moink was founded by an English generation farmer who was featured on Shark Tank. Host Kevin O'Leary said it was the best bacon he's ever tasted, and I absolutely agree with him. And Jamie Simonoff, creator of the Ring Video door- Doorbell, was one of the first investors in Moink. So join the Moink movement today. Go to Moink Box. That's M O I N K Box dot com slash believe right now. And listeners to the show get free bacon for a year with every box ordered. You heard that right. Free bacon for a year. And that's the best bacon you'll ever taste, but it is for a limited time. So you got to go to Moink, M O I N K B O X. That's moinkbox.com slash believe, B L E A V. That's moinkbox.com slash believe. Every box of meat you buy, you're going to get free bacon for a year. Make sure to tell them the guys at the LA Football Network sent you. Oh, man, dude, I had I had such a hard time keeping Keyshawn Johnson off this list. And now that I'm like saying it out loud, I regret it. Like, I think he should have been just because you said that everything about it, the charisma, the uh, his character, his persona, obviously how good he was on the field. He ended up being, like you said, the number one overall pick. Uh, I know we've talked about this before. Is there any other receivers that have been the number one overall pick? Is, is he the only one? I don't. I can't think, think of any of the. Maybe like a long time ago, but recently, like modern era, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Yeah, I can't either. So, I mean, but obviously that doesn't pertain to when he was in college, but everything he did on the field. So, yeah, I'm, yeah I think you have a good, a good spot at five. I'm definitely, uh, I'm kind of regret. I, I like my list, but I would have, I should have him over, you know, Josh Rosen or, or Maurice Jones Drew, I think for sure. So, so well done, sir. I think, I think you're good. Well, <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Uh, so my number four, I went with UCLA quarterback Brett Hundley. Uh, now the dude okay. was ultra su- ultra successful on the field. Um, it was kind of at a time when you know the the heyday of USC was kind of not there. You know, it was post Pete Carroll. Um, UCLA was more on the rise. They had a lot of polarizing figures at UCLA, and I think a lot of attention was on UCLA. They were very mm-hmm. competitive. A lot, like I said, a lot of talent. Uh, and Brett Hundley, man, uh, three thousand yards every single year. He was a starter. Um, at least 22 touchdowns a year. And then uh, his final year, he only had five interceptions. So I think just the talent level and playing for UCLA um, and being in LA and Hollywood and all that stuff, I just think that with him being that quarterback, and there's not a lot of good UCLA quarterbacks that have really reached that threshold and, you know, Cade McNown and and maybe maybe one or two others down the road. But Brett Hundley, I think, is, is deserving of that spot. And, and, uh, and on this list, he's my highest ranking UCLA quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good one. And um so out of curiosity, because I think you you had Josh Rosen just out of it, what yeah. to you was more marketable about Brett Hundley over Josh Rosen? He seemed like he had a little bit more of a personality. You kind of got into a little bit with Rosen where he did, didn't seem like he was that kind of outgoing guy. And Hundley, yeah. he seems a little bit reserved too, but not like he doesn't rub you like the wrong way. He he, yeah. he may be a little introverted, but he's not like – he didn't come off bad. So I think Hundley could have been – you know, that guy could, you know, there's probably a switch where he turned it on and, and he was probably a really personable guy. Yeah. Hunley seemed more like a, I don't want to, well, I don't know, I'll just say he seemed more like down to earth, just kind of quieter, humble. Whereas Rosen was kind of just like the heel, like, like no one really like, he, like you said, rub people the wrong way after he was in the spotlight, he like didn't like it. And so people kind of like, okay, well, you know, we're giving you all this promo and so that could have been bad, but then I'm, I saw it as more like, okay, well, he can be like the villain in like marketing and, and still make money that way. That, that's but, not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, I realized though, I didn't do my five. Well, we skipped. So you had, you had a uh, Keyshawn five and then now you have oh, that's right. yeah, yeah. Uh, my five. Uh, we mentioned really, I had Troy Aikman at five. You had him at what? Eight. Yes. No. Eight seven. Or seven. Seven. Okay. So I had him at five. Um, you said mostly everything about him, just the marketability of him, you know, being originally born in West Covina and then moving to Oklahoma, going to school out there, going to University of Oklahoma, and then coming back out West. So like the prodigal son returns home, but now he's got the Southern draw, be the John Wayne of the West. Uh, and obviously he led UCLA to some of their most successful seasons under Donnelly as the coach. Uh, ended up being the first overall pick. Uh, so representing UCLA well. And I think just the fact of him coming from a high 
you know, power five school, I think the big eight at the time in Oklahoma, and then now coming out West, it, it brought a lot of that hype with him. And obviously they, they did it on the field. So um, that's why I had him at, at five, I guess a little higher. And obviously we know what he did in the NFL, uh, which wouldn't pertain to this, but I'm curious, do you know, I wonder how many people know this, do you know why he transferred from Oklahoma to UCLA? I got to think it was something with Barry Switzer. So he was the, the starting. Yeah. It's, I mean, they ran, a lot of, they ran the option. Yeah. So but. he was the actual starter. I don't know if it was his sophomore year or freshman year. I know he had to sit out a year of eligibility when he transferred, but he was the starter, got hurt, like tore his Achilles or something in week, like one or two, like really early on. So they switched over to their other quarterback and basically switched the offense to the wishbone, Barry Switzer's oh, right like, wishbone. Okay. And so then they had a success. They won a national championship that year. So like, you're not going to go back from your, it's kind of like with USC, like Keaton Slovis was so good. You're not going to go back to JT Daniels. So then right. uh, Switzer actually called up Donnelly at UCLA that, who ran a very pass friendly offense and said, Hey, you got to get Troy to transfer over here. And so they kind of did inner workings behind the scenes. And then Troy ended up that's, has been ruined. That's gnarly. I like that. I, yeah. I'd never heard that before. It yeah. makes a lot of sense and good for Barry to do that. Exactly. I think it ended up being good for both parents. You always wonder when people transfer, like if you, especially in older times, like, Oh, was there like bad blood or something happened? But it's right. like, just, you know, life happens. And I think right. that's good for both, for both parties. hundred so, percent. I love that. Yeah. So, okay. So Troy Aikman five, your four was Brett Hundley. So my four, I've been waiting to talk about this guy. I'm excited. Like, if he's on your list, I'll be surprised. I don't think he's going to be on it though. Okay. Todd Marinovich. Oh, you're right. No, he's not. Remember that is Todd? a good one though. That's Todd a great Marinovich, Robo, quarterback, Robo QB, USC, right? Robo QB, the California <laughs> magazine, the making of the perfect athlete was the title on the magazine. Um, he was like the original uh, poster boy for like crazy sports dad or sports parent that just drives your kid to the limit. He had never had like a cheeseburger until he got to college, like never ate carbs, uh, was just literally the top recruit. And ended up, uh, I think he was out of NorCal, ended up down here at USC. So that alone, he was like everything on like every college magazine. Um, obviously, he did not live up to the hype. He still had a, he had a pretty good college career and ended up getting drafted for 24th overall by the then Las Vegas, or not, then the Los Angeles Raiders. Um, but yeah, I think just the fact of what the hype he had coming out of high school he would have been making boatloads of money here in Los Angeles. He was always like a, a playboy too in college. Like there's videos of him like in limos and stuff, like donning the USC Cardinal and gold and, and what he did afterwards. I think that was the worst thing of his career was being drafted in the same city he went to college to just because he never left those, those party circles he was in. But um, yeah, he would have made so much money here in LA. And I know it didn't work out on the football field, but just those four years at SC, who would have been crazy for him. So I had to put him at four. Dude, one hundred percent. I'm actually really disappointed. I didn't think of that. That's a great one. That is a hundred percent a good one. Definitely top five. If I would have thought of him, definitely would have been in top five. So, uh, good one. Good on you, dude. That's a good one. That's uh, he was honestly. Wanna... So when we when we started making this list, honestly, he was the first name I thought of. I don't know why. I just have you seen the documentary of him? Of the thirty for thirty. I was gonna say it's thirty for thirty, right? Yeah. Yeah. A long time ago, but yes, yeah, I've seen. Him. Really good, uh, really good 30 for 30. And it's, it's unfortunate because at the time of them making it, he had been sober for quite some time and like was rebuilding his life, started surfing, was trying to get involved. And since that came out, I know he's relapsed a few times, unfortunately. So mm. hopefully, obviously, his health is most important. But as far as his list goes, I was like, dude, that guy would have made, oh, he would have been at Wheaties, I'm sure McDonald's because he never had a burger before in his life. McDonald's would be like, we'll give you as many burgers and be the face of us. Now you love cheeseburgers. And yeah, it would been good for him. Yeah, that would have been crazy. Good one. Good one, dude. I'm I'm a little jealous, to be honest with you, but but good one. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah um, I forgot Keyshawn, so yeah, now we're even. Right. <laughs> uh so my number three, I uh, you had him earlier. I don't remember exactly where, but Maurice Jones Drew. Uh, this is where I slated him. I think he obviously the way he parlayed um into a job with NFL network and he's an analyst and he's, you know, he's, he's got a good gig there now kind of shows that he is a personable guy. He's always kind of been that outspoken kind of personality. And, and like you said, his stature, the bowling ball type of running style um, didn't really blow anybody away with stats. But like you said, his versatility, he was dangerous in the running game, the passing game and the kick return game. So he was all over the field. And I think it would have been a really easy translate uh, transition to be all over the media. And I think he would have been a really big, uh, um, uh, big money grabber it had that been around during his playing days, just because of who he is and personality wise. And I think he would have had the gumption and, uh, and you know, that, that, and I know that chip on shoulder 
was the lowest, but it really got there after the draft. But, you know, that chip on your shoulder, you want to go out and prove yourself. You want to make a name for yourself. And he was that kind of guy. And I think you said a lot about him too. So, um, yeah, MJD is my number three. Love it. Yeah. And he just that smile just has that great, beautiful right? smile that he could be on everything. So I, I spoke on him a lot, but yeah, love that. Uh, um, I had him. <laughs> and I feel like him. nice. And I feel like he doesn't take himself too seriously, which in, in that, like, so I think you could go a ton of places with that sort of personality when you don't take your tip. I mean, look at Shaq, you know, like he's yeah. everywhere. He's so funny. And it's, it's sort of the yeah. same thing. You don't take yourself too seriously, man. People love you. Oh, you, know, you have to absolutely. Especially when all these, athletes are viewed as almost gods by some people when you see that human <laughs> side of them just like poking the bear having fun it's like oh right. that guy seems sweet just like have a beer with <laughs> have a brewery ex time whacker with you know little name drop there you go perfect um, but um yeah so my number three i went matt liner uh obviously yeah. more recent memory but you know one of the greatest college qbs of his era uh i ended up getting drafted 11th overall uh won the heisman um, he was like, you know, Mr. Playboy during the L that Oh three, Oh four, Oh five, uh, era where USC was just so dominant. I mean, you could probably rank them in the top five of college football teams of all time. Like them, Miami, this recent Alabama team, um, USC, the Oh five team, the Oh four team would be up there. So, uh, he was just so good, you know, left-handed, which I think is in a weird way, kind of marketable too, just because it's different. Sure. The fact that he throws yeah. left, there's something else there they could do advertising wise and branding wise. Um, so yeah, Matt Leinert. And I remember, I guess he was in the NFL and then that photo. Of, no, maybe he was in college of him doing like uh beer bongs in like Arizona or something. I don't know if you remember when that came out. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't remember that. No. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> Good guy. Now he's a family man, but I remember, I think I've told you this story before, but I worked at a restaurant in college in sunset beach, California. And his family was actually from Huntington Beach, I think. Definitely. Oh, right yeah. So his mom and dad would come into our restaurant all the time. But one time he came in, and this was, I think, right after he'd been drafted or maybe a few years after. And he brought like a, a stack of photos of himself, like that thick, and was just sitting at the table while they're having dinner, just like signing, like autographing these photos. That's kind of a weird place to be doing this. Like, why not at home on your kitchen table? But hey, whatever. <laughs> but he's a big right. dude. I remember that first time I saw him and he walked in. I'm like, damn, that is a big guy because sometimes they all look the same on tv on the field yeah the big dude i mean he's like six five and you know probably 220 so right. anyway like, <laughs> not like story person perfect segue because he's my number two and i love that story for sure um yeah. I, it, 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 funny <laughs> sometimes random parts of the day that story will enter my mind for for whatever <laughs> reason you know how that happens it's just random yeah. thoughts it's happened at least twice. I can, I can think of where it's like, I, I think of that story of him signing autographs, but anyway, um, but yeah, Matt line is my number two. Every, yeah, exactly, man. The, the USC was the pinnacle of, of college football back then. And being the quarterback of USC and Matt line the Hollywood, you know, Snoop Dogg was on the sideline. Will Farrell was showing like all these Hollywood, like, Matt Liner would have slid right in and, and, and made himself a ton of money uh, before even making the pros. And I, yeah, Matt Liner is, is, was probably the easy, he was probably the first one I thought of uh, to be honest with you when I thought of this list. So, but he, he ended up my number two. Yeah. So good. And yeah, just, he was, I'm assuming who your number one is. I'm curious. So it's funny. You left off one of these guys that I have on. So I'm, I'm curious, yeah, if I'm, gonna I'm, regret it. curious if you're going to regret it or not, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, he was like the, the face of the team, him in, and then my number two, Reggie Bush, uh, obviously. And obviously now with this new NIL rule coming out and Bush, you know, trying to get his Heisman back, which I absolutely think he should have back. I think it's ridiculous that he doesn't. Um, yeah. Even with, the, you know, I, I was talking earlier, we did our live show and there's, you know, people with way worse infractions, just life infractions that are still Heisman winners. Yeah. Um, and he didn't, you know, he accepted like a home, <laughs> whatever for his mom, which, you know, obviously is against the rules. But anyway, that's besides right. the point. Reggie yeah. Bush, though, one of the most prolific and exciting college football players of all time, um, made eye black cool again with having your, you know, digits on there. What was it? Six one nine or something he had on, on there. San Diego. Yeah. Something yeah. San Diego. repping that. And just like MJD played every position, he played every position, but just excelled obviously a little bit more. Yeah. Um, that game against Fresno state where he had like over 500 plus all purpose yards. The, obviously the highlight reel of him running to the sideline, stopping on a dime guy dives past him, takes to the house. Like his play alone made him so marketable. And you add in the factor that he was just a phenomenal looking dude. Like just one of the great looking dudes, you know, dated what Kim Kardashian and I think Jessica Simpson, all those models and whatever. 
and you know just running the streets of LA you know stories I've heard from you know Frosty Rucker that I won't share here on the air but is always great just that team in general because he was a part of that awesome team and just kind of the power they had here in Los Angeles is always fun to hear but he was yeah he was a household name throughout his career and the fact that Lendell White sometimes had actually more rushing yards than him but everyone knew Reggie Reggie was right. the guy um, I think just shows how much and how marketable he was had he been able to be. Yeah, one hundred percent. And in my opinion, I'm I'm curious to see who the third one is for you or number one is for you. Um, but yeah, the only guy that I think of would have made more money than Matt Leonard at that time would have been Reggie Bush. Uh, and and yeah, just piggybacking off what you said, the guy just had he truly any time he touched the ball he could have scored. That was a true the a truest statement of any player I've ever talked about in, in terms of college football. Where if he touched the ball, he he could score. It's it's yeah. unbelievable, but it's true. Um, yeah. Anywhere on the field, any position on the field, I think he he was a threat and and to score every single time he touched the ball. And I love Reggie Bush. I think he he belongs in that conversation. Um, he's a staple in the conversation for greatest college football player of all time. And and yeah, utterly ridiculous that the Heisman is vacated. That's ridiculous. Um, we can get into that, but there's there's no point because we all agree, I believe. But yeah, man, the, the amount of of marketing and the amount of traction that that guy would have gotten. Um, with his skills alone, but like you said, he had the look, he had the personality, he had the charisma, uh, he had the star power, he had every single thing you need to make money in, 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 with your personality, and and he would have done it tenfold. And um, yeah, definitely my number one. And the fa- and the fact that I, I hope he, I hope this gets rectified for him because he deserves it. He, he it's a shame yeah, what, what I know. They did to him. But I mean, thank God he's finally welcome back in the USC family. The right? fact that they waited a decade for that is ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah. Now finally he's welcome back there. Um, yeah, man, he was just so fun to watch. The the most recent, and still I don't think it was to his level, but the most recent player I remember watching being like every time he touches the ball was Christian McCaffrey at Stanford. Yep. There was times you're just like, just get the ball in his hands, and he'd make yep. a 80 yard play. And I remember thinking, watching a game once, it probably was against UCLA or something or USC. And I'm like, man, if if they hit him on a bubble screen here, it just feels like that moment where he's going to score. And like, boom, of course, like 80 yard bubble screen. Are you freaking kidding me? Like, I (laughs) just called that into existence. So, (laughs) Reggie Bush, my two, you're one. All right. So, my number one, either I'm way off or you're (laughs) way off because you don't have him on your list at all. Right. I have him as my number one. I'm going juice, OJ Simpson. I feel Ah, like when you look at pure football and what he meant to USC to LA, what he created because of what he did at USC. I mean, post the crime and illegal stuff, but like him being in Hollywood and he was just so beloved in LA circles during his time in college. And then obviously post NFL career after playing for Buffalo, obviously was good when the Heisman uh, rushed for like over a thousand yards as a freshman rushed for like 15, 1600 yards after that Uh, many, many touchdowns. So he's great on the football field. You're given the nickname juice. I mean, how many orange juice commercials would he have been in? uh during his time there so to me oj i know some people it's hard to separate football from afterlife but just looking at football what he did at usc when he got there he was los angeles like he put usc back on the map or on the map that was in the early you know early 40s or whatever 50s uh and he kind of made the usc program and created this running back university because all the great running backs came after oj what oj did marcus allen charles white Reggie Bush, all these great guys uh, came after OJ. So I had to, I had to pay my respects in a football sense to OJ and what he could have done marketing wise. We saw what he did in the NFL marketing wise, probably made the most money marketing and advertising during his era as an NFL player. And I think he would have done that as a college player as well. So I don't know who's wrong, me or you, but I got OJ. <laughs> no, that, that is someone I thought about. And to be honest with you, I think when I was making this list, for, for whatever reason, I chose between Marcus Allen and OJ, and, and I went with Marcus. I don't know why I felt I had to choose between the two. But, yeah, obviously all the off-field stuff with OJ is – I'm sure maybe that crept into my mind a little bit. But, yeah, even the fact that – and this is post-USC uh, days, but even the fact that he acted in movies um, yeah. and stuff – tells you that he would have been able to act in commercials, right? So yeah, hundred percent. I do agree that he would have been a big moneymaker. Um, do I think he would have, I don't think I would have ever had him number one. I do. Mm-hmm. I do agree. He does belong on the list. So that is, I'd probably put him over Sam Darnold or maybe Ronnie Lott or something. Um, or Cade McNown. Yeah, definitely Cade McNown. I would, I would, I would bump him for him, but, uh, but yeah, I, I didn't have him. Um, probably more of a personal choice than anything, but yeah, I definitely don't agree or don't disagree with him being on the list. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I happen to leave him off, but yeah, don't disagree with him. I think too, what went into it is 
at the time, sadly, in our in our country, there was a lot of uh, racial sure. uh, div- divisiveness, I guess. It was kind of like, okay, you're athletes, but outside of the football field, like you're not in our circle, whatnot. And OJ was like the first player, anyone that watched that ESPN document, it was like a five-part documentary series on him. He was like the first African-American player to kind of bridge that. And he was like accepted at all these rich white, uh, you know, golf clubs and tennis clubs. And he was in commercials. And this is obviously a lot of this was after college, but he started that process during his collegiate career at USC. So I thought of that and I'm like, there was something different about him in a, in a marketing sense, what he was able to do yeah. to persuade people. And so I just think he would have been, been crazy uh, during his time if he actually was able to. Yeah. So you make the, the points you're making are hundred percent legit like I, I think you're right i think he would have been a, i mean he as soon as he hit the nfl he was everywhere so yeah had it been available well, even, i think he would have been everywhere even the that. sad thing and we won't get into who believes you know he was is a murderer or not we don't need to get into that but even after all that and and then spending jail time after he still is in like advertising and repping companies and now that he right. lives in Vegas and he like reps betting companies and stuff like still to this day with all his pretty checkered history <laughs> so that, that name Mike, carries a lot man good and Mike bad. Can advertise the guy can sell like something they, well what do they say he breeds cash is that what they say so i mean yeah that might be a wrestling term but yeah i, I think it it works in the real world as well <laughs> yeah I controversy so. breeds cash man yeah it does it does um well there you have it the coach and myself the top 10 potential earners of the usc and ucla football teams before this nil rule was passed so let us know what you think love to hear uh, if we left anyone off or whose list you like better hit us up on twitter you can hit up the coach at coach graph 34 let him know that he was uh made a big mistake by leaving the juice <laughs> off his list or you can message me at ryan dyard lafb let me know how much i messed up by keeping Keyshawn off my list because i'm definitely regretting that as well uh or just hit up the main account at lafb network make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts we are everywhere you listen and please if you go watch us on youtube at lafb network hit that subscribe button hit the bell to get all notifications certainly helps us out and we appreciate it as we continue to grow our brand and coach i'm so pumped for you for your soon-to-be wife for this week coming up can't wait to celebrate with you guys as you join uh, a very i'll call it exclusive an exclusive club that i'm proud to be part of and uh, i'm glad to welcome you into it so it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh looking forward to it man yeah i appreciate it dude yeah mama comes in tomorrow and um it's it, this this week's gonna go by fast and we're super oh, excited yeah. to, to celebrate with everybody and super thrilled that you guys are gonna be there yeah one thing and i'll we'll obviously talk at your actual wedding but one thing i always say to people is on your wedding night, take a moment, the two of you together, and just don't talk to anyone. Sit back, whether you need to sit at your table or whether you need to step like out and just like take it in. Because the night goes so fast and so many brides and grooms the whole time are, you know, thanking everyone, going table to table, taking pictures, doing all this. And then uh, next thing you know, it's over. So just take like five minutes and go either at your table, to the corner, out to outside somewhere and just like have your cocktail, look at each other, thankful and and yeah, just take it in because the day is about you guys and we're excited to celebrate it. That's good advice. And uh, I believe I'll take you up on that. There we go. Yeah, I'll force you to when we're there. So, <laughs> um, yeah, everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is the LA Football Podcast on the LA Football Network, on the Believe Podcast Network. Thank you so much to Bet Online, Moink, Brewery X, and Manscaped for sponsoring the show. Hope you guys all have a fantastic weekend. And we will talk to you all here in just a couple of days. Oh,